much. First of all, first of all, thank you so much for being here today, Friday, this time, and last day of the week. That's uh, thank you so much. A big thank you. Um, this is the title of our webinar, our third webinar uh, for the template project. It's digital tools for the clear trilingual classroom. Okay, make the most of your language teaching. And we are the um, leaders of the Spanish team, Spanish partner in a template project. Um, my name is Noelia, Noelia Ruiz. I'm a senior lecturer here at the English Studies Department and the coordinator of the GRAPE Research Group. I work with uh, Carmen and with Immaculada. Immaculada, uh, she cannot join us today because of academic reasons. She is in, uh, in Wien, I think. Um, and uh, well, and um, she has also participated in the um, organization and design of the materials we're going to share with you today. Um, Immaculata is a full professor, also coordinator of the GRIP, uh, GRIP Research Group, and also a teacher in the English Studies Department. And you already know Carmen. Uh, Carmen, is, she's a language advisor in our language uh, service here at the university. Uh, working for the Self Access Center and also an EMI teacher training and our project supporter. So uh, this is the team. This this is us. And uh, just in case you want to contact us, feel free after the webinar for any other um, business you want to to talk to to us or share with us. Just feel free to contact us. Um, to start with, and to, to go into the, the topic, um, we would like to know a little bit about you. We already know what you do. You, we already know uh, um, if you are in-service, pre-service teachers and what's your uh, discipline. Uh, but we would like to know a little bit more, more about your profile, about your profile uh, on the languages and also about CLIL, which is the topic of uh, mainly of this of this uh, webinar. So um, we would like to um, I would like you to to share um, in in the Menti we have designed. You have there the QR or the code you can use. And the first question you have is which languages can you use? By use, we mean the languages you are able to employ at any context in at any level. I mean, in any level. I mean, it's, it's um, I can speak a little bit, I can understand, I can read, but I cannot uh, interact, but you can read. I mean, it's just any level, any language that um, can be part, you could consider as part of your linguistic repertoire. And in the second question, uh, we would like you to, to tell us a little bit what your experience with CLIL, what you know about CLIL, if you are a CLIL teacher, if you have experienced CLIL as a student, as a teacher, or you have observed a CLIL session, um, anything you may know about CLIL, or you have read, just about clear, okay? So um, we're going to give you just some, some time, okay? To, uh, okay, we see that you are already there. Okay, a few seconds more. Okay, obviously English is speaker because it's the language probably that we all share and we all speak than Spanish. Well, there's a you know significant number of uh, people from from Spain and also Catalan because probably. Um, uh, well, we are, you know, our area is bilingual. Our official languages um, are Spanish and Catalan. So we are bilingual uh, here in, in 
in Comunidad Valenciana. Then we have German. We have just some presence of German. And then we have um, just, uh, well, mm, I would like to know uh, probably, well, we have Japanese, Chinese, okay. We have Lithuanian. And, uh, and well, we have some contributions. I don't know how to how to um well how to consider them but um uh well anyway lithuanian also well so quite um you know number of of languages okay and uh okay so we can consider ourselves a um plurilingual uh multilingual group with plurilingual probably speakers um, about CLIL, well, some of you, uh, well, you know a little bit about, about uh, CLIL, okay, so the definition, we have the definition here, stands for Content and Language Integrated Learning, okay, so that's the starting point, having the definition, and then really effective approach for language learning, okay, that's a um, positive view on CLIL and, uh, well, some theory here and not practice in Germany, okay, but maybe you, the, the person who posted this know a little bit about that. And um, it's a way to teach not only languages, but with languages, okay, so we are just, you know, grasping the, the main aspects of clear languages, a way to teach and learn multiple things, this, different disciplines, so language discipline and the definition. So, well, um, there's some knowledge about, um, about CLIL in the group, which would be very, very helpful for um, what it's coming in the following slides. So, well, uh, I suppose you, you already talked about plurilingualism in the previous webinar, but we uh, understood that if, if we're going to talk about CLIL, we have to go back to plurilingualism and the definition of plurilingualism. We like Picard's definition because it's quite metaphoric, uh, uh, but it it's metaphoric, but it reflects what plurilingual competence, what the plurilingual competence actually uh, is or uh, should be considered. So um, plurilingual uh, is not a patchwork or a, kill or a quilt of neatly arranged multicolored pieces, but rather a somewhat color painting in which the different colors merge into one another seamlessly to create something unique as you know the background you have here in which there is no boundaries in between the colors candle the colors are merging okay the colors are merging so that's plurilingualism is that's a whole construct it's a it's a unique um um competence it's an only competence that we uh construct when we are in contact with different languages and this is, uh, an, and it's very important to distinguish uh, between multilingualism and plurilingualism. We use, we sometimes see these terms as synonyms, or we use them as synonyms, but they are not. Multilingualism, as, as defined by the Council of Europe, is referred to the coexistence of different languages at the social or individual level. So, for example, we are a multilingual group because we have, um, because there are different languages involved in the group, but, but we maybe, well, I suppose, and I, uh, I know that, um, 100% of the in of the participants in the group today are plurilingual but we could have a multilingual society or a multilingual group and not having plurilingual speakers in that group or participants in that group okay um and that's that's the difference the multilingualism is referred to 
the coexistence of different languages, while prilingualism stands for the dynamic and developing linguistic repertoire of an individual user or learner. So uh, an individual user or learner can be living in a multilingual society, but for any reason, uh, he or she can uh, be uh, can not be prilingual. Okay, so that's that's the difference. Uh, when we talk about prilingualism in education, we have to think about different pluralistic approaches. How to introduce prilingualism in 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 the in the classroom? How to apply it when we design the materials and when we teach? Okay, languages in the classroom. So there are like four different approaches. Uh, the first one is the intercultural approach, um, in which we deal with cultural aspects and uh, intercultural um, uh, aspects in, in, in when, when teaching languages. Also, uh, we can uh, help, we can promote uh, awakening to languages in our students. We can work on the intercomprehension of related languages, the similarities that we can find in between languages that are in contact, okay, and make students aware of the um, these similarities and how easy it is to understand and to 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 to, to read or to to follow um, one conversation or to read some piece of news in a language that is very similar to yours, and uh, also we can approach this. Uh, plurilingual um, 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 aspect from an integrated didactic approach. So trying to integrate different languages and content, which is the case, for example, of CLIL, or integrating languages and uh, approaching languages from just one view, okay, all together from a plurilingual perspective. So uh, how to do it, how to materialize all this in the classroom. So uh, we should think about the design of plurilingual tasks, how to integrate all these languages and this plurilingual perspective in the materials we work with. So a plurilingual task um, is, um, is defined as a language learning activity that requires the use of multiple languages and diverse cultural knowledge. And I would like you to think, to go back to the case studies, okay, that you uh, had the opportunity to, to, to see before um, this online session and think about these case studies and project these ideas on the case studies. So is this case study promoting the use of multiple languages, um, creates opportunities for learners use of their plurilingual resources to engage in meaningful and personally relevant communication and builds an authentic plurilingual practice experienced by learners in their everyday lives. So these are the main characteristics that our colleague from the German, um, from the German partners from the German team uh, uses to define um, to define the plurilingual task and see if these traits are present in your case studies. So one of the plurilingual um, approaches that um, that was mentioned before is the integrated didactic approach that can integrate languages, just languages or content and language, which is the case. Uh, is clear, okay? And uh, well, you already uh, defined clear in in the Manti activity, but I would like to share short, very brief, short video, okay, on on clear on the definition on a little bit of history of clear. It's just one minute video, but I think it's very um, enlightening and it can just help us to pave the way for what is coming. Okay, so I'm going to stop now um, sharing because 
Um, I just want to share from, um, let me see, how can I do it? Wait a minute. Now I'm going to share one tab with you so that you can listen to this. It's the story of this flock. The business is <laughs> Okay, we stop here, we continue, sorry. Um, mm -mm. Okay, we continue sharing. Mm. Sorry about that, oh, my presentation is here, sorry. Okay, so as um, you could see in the video, okay, CLEAL, uh, it's a dual focused educational approach in which an additional language, which is usually, usually at least here in Spain is English. However, we can find other models for CLEAL with German and French. And probably in the rest of Europe, we can find other models of CLEAL with an additional language that it's uh, maybe Spanish or French or Italian, okay? And is used for the learning and teaching of both content and language with the objective of promoting both content and language mastery to predefined levels, okay? So it uh, deals with teaching content through an additional language, language but with the final aim of learning both language and content, okay? This CLIL, um, um, this CLIL um, um, approach has also been transferred to university context and it has been uh, known as English as a medium of instruction or uh, integrated content and language in higher education, okay? And it's a very complex, um, uh, um, um, construct, let's say, because we do not only um, cater for content and language, but it also involves an effective site because we have to create a secure learning environment or we have to focus on the academic language and see how um, this academic language should be introduced or taught or make salient in the materials we, desi we designed. And also we have to reflect, uh, CLIL makes teachers and students reflect on their own learning because it's, it's it, learning content and language, it's not the same as learning only content through your L1, okay? And um, the scaffolding um, aspect uh, becomes fundamental. So trying to help our students to digest content through an additional language requires the design of very specific and effective scaffolding. 
okay, not only for the language, but also for the learning process itself. So as you can see, there are lots of aspects we have to take into account when we deal with, uh, with PLIL, okay? And uh, that's why it's a complex, um, but it's a complex um, approach, let's say, to the, within the plurilingual options, pl plurilingual um, approaches we have already mentioned, but it's also, uh, it's been very popular and studies show that it's also effective at some point. So uh, that's why we um, propose CLIL as, as um, the um, approach for this uh, webinar today. But how does it take place in the classroom? How is this eventually developed and implemented in a real classroom? We want to share with you some just seconds, few seconds, few minutes maybe, of um, a real CLIL session uh, of economics taught in English in a secondary school here in Castellón de la Plana, the city where we, we live, in Spain. Okay, it was recorded on the 6th of April, so almost one year ago. And uh, we want, I'm going to stop sharing again with you so that um, we can share it through the, um, through the um, um, top so that you can listen to it properly. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to here and top, okay. Okay. Mm. Sorry, I'm not a flying. I'm here. Okay, no, sorry. Okay, just to um, provide you some context, this is an, um, the subject of economics in the secondary education. The teacher is teaching in English and it's uh, dealing with the languages and, um, and some aspects of, uh, about languages and, and um, typical aspects or um, cliches from different the different countries of Europe because the, it's dealing with um, some um, economic aspects uh, about Europe. Okay, so she starts introducing the different countries and different traditions and different languages uh, in order to narrow down into the specific topic dealing with the subject. So the teacher is giving the instructions of the preview, the, the first task the students have to complete. And you have to, to collect information about the country, the capital city, the flag, uh, customs, typical disease. And when you, once you collect the information, you have to make a poster. So do you, you, uh, do you know um, Geniali application? Okay, because you have to make or to create a Geniali poster. So first of all, you need an account. You have to create an account. And once you create your account, you can make the poster. So and uh, you have to create an image, uh, an interactive image. So first of all, to think about the information, you want to focus. So the country, the flag, uh, what else? Mm, the capital, uh, the capital city, inhabitants and customs. So to collect information, and once you collect the information, you have to make the poster, okay? Well, okay, so this is the information. You have to collect related to the country. And well, you can see the video, you can watch the video with all the instructions to make a poster, an interactive image. And 
this is a model we can use okay so and it's an interactive image and we can click here and Madrid is the capital city of course so uh, we have all the information typical information so Spain yeah the flag okay I think that's enough okay for um, well this is what uh, CLIL, uh, our CLIL is in the real context. So the, this teacher is usually teaching Spanish or in Catalan language. And uh, this um, course she decided, this school year she decided to, to move into English and teach uh, her subject in English, economics. And as you can see, she manages and she teaches um, the content in English. And students are expected to produce uh, the outputs, the activities, the um, and the interaction here in, in English in the class, as you as you could see. So, living plurilingualism apart, and as you could see in in this in this um, clear session, and also from the title of our presentation, we also wanted to focus on technology and how the uh, sorry. I'm not sharing. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. Okay, too many things. Okay, now. So um, now we're moving in. We're moving on to uh, technology, the second aspect of this presentation today. So uh, first of all, the definition of digital competence by the uh, Council of Europe. So being digital competent involves. Um, the confident, critical, and responsible use of an engagement with digital technologies for learning at work and for participation in society. We're going to focus on learning, of course, okay, because it's it's um it's the education field which um matters here, okay. So the six competence areas that the Council of Europe distinguishes are problem solving, information and data literacy, communication and collaboration, digital content creation and safety. So to be competent, uh, to be digital competent uh, means to uh, master, or to know or to be competent in these six different areas. How is this uh, translated, how this, this is transferred to the world of education. So the Digital Competence Framework for Educators was created, the DITCOMP EDU. I invite you to, if you don't know this framework, uh, I invite you to visit it, to go to the website and visit and have a look at that because it's going to become, and it has become already, um, an important tool for education and uh, technology. Okay, so it details 22 competencies uh, dealing with, with education organized in the six areas I uh, already mentioned. Okay, but the, the, the most important thing is that um, the framework uh, aims to detail how digital technologies can be used to enhance and innovate education and training. Okay, so it focuses not only on the teachers, not only on the materials, but also on the learners. It focuses on the three different dimensions of education. So, and it details the competencies that should be present and the skill and the, and the, and, and the content that should be present in the three dimensions in order to, uh, to create or in order to, uh, to, to, to obtain Okay, or to to promote digital competence in um, in in the educational field, in order to to introduce effectively digital competence training. So um, uh, now um, we would like to know a little bit about you at this point, and there is a poll in the chat, and we would like to know. In according to the competence levels, the, the digital competence levels that are defined in the EduCop uh, in the in the framework, um, which level do you think you could be uh, you could be 
at i mean i don't know if you could i mean it's i know it's it's um it's just a, a very very um um just you know when just last minute decision so you you just now have to think about uh how could you consider yourself but just um think about the levels of the european um framework for languages so the a1 a2 a b1 b2 so transfer this you know the definition of these levels to to technology and try to 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 you know um define your level with just one level with just one one of the of the levels that are here um described you have the poll on the right. You must have received like a pop-up message. But if you cannot find it, you can go to the symbols. There's a triangle, square, and a in a circle on your uh, the bottom right corner, and then you can open it and go into polls, and you will see the results. Okay, have six people so far. All right, so, so far, um, um, I think you can see the results. Uh, three people voted for C1, so that means you have quite a consistent use and uh, understanding and control and command of uh, digital tools. Um, two people voted for B2, and uh, well, that means that you 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 are go a little bit further than B1 in in meaning that uh, you think about the benefits and drawbacks of the digital tools that you're using, and then there's a B1 vote, uh, which as you can see in the description, it means that you try to experiment and you use them in a wide variety of situations. Okay, um, I don't know if you have all voted. Okay, so B2, three more votes. We have seven people now. Okay. So B two C one seem to be the wow. the levels. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's really techno people. Okay, so um, as we are very techno people, then we could just um, um, think about and maybe why not apply into our teaching practices the SAM model. The SAM model was um, um, model to apply. Um, technology uh, in a significant way in our teaching practices and material design pr process. So it was uh, coined by Puente Dura to, in 2006, and it, um, he distinguished uh, four different um, scales. So using technology as a substitute is using technology as, you know, a limitation, uh, to using technology to modify and using technology to redefine. So in the first case, for example, uh, that means using technology for um, asking our students to, to type up an essay instead of handwriting it. We are just using technology as a substitute of the pencil. We could, we could um, modify and we could uh, go a little bit beyond if we ask our students to um, activate the, you know, uh, automatic corrector, and uh, it, that could give them feedback on the writing and go a step beyond and not become not only um, not only become a substitute but something else. Maybe it could be here in the augmentation. Um, Another example would be for augmentation, could be uh, students give an oral presentation accompanied by a PowerPoint slideshow, for example. So it means something else uh, than a presenting without any visual support and because the PowerPoint makes the students or forces the student to think about the content, summarize. So there are more cognitive strategies working at that, you know, in, in that moment than just presenting, orally presenting. When we think about modification, for example, we are asking students to, for example, create a podcast in which they discuss a topic, which is different, completely different to um, make them speak about a topic in class. Obviously, they have to prepare it in advance and they can rehearse. But if we have them, if we make them 
record themselves and um, create a podcast, we are involving more aspects and we are making them, for example, thinking about their learning process. They have the opportunity to listen to themselves different times, to realize about their mistakes, to correct their mistakes, to polish their discourse and their, the words they, uh, they use and the tone they use, the intonation they use. So they can reflect on their learning process, not only on the content, but also on the way they, they do it, okay? And uh, an example of redefinition could be, for example, create a video about their family in which they could use, they have to use different files in which the digital competence is fully you know, integrated. And also they can include authentic materials, they can include different languages, they can, I mean, it's a very complex task that could not be possible without technology. That could be the breadth definition. So these are the different, um, different types of applying technology to our models. And so if we integrate the plurilingual, if we have into account the plurilingual dimension and the technology dimension, and we think about the concept of task, the plurilingual task that we had already um, presented some slides uh, before, um, we could... Um, we could think about the TPAC model as just the ideal model to integrate all this together. And I uh, just wanted to share this with you today. And if you are interested in this model and how to apply it, please check the, um, uh, the, the bibliography, the references you will have in the template um, project website and check about the model, which is, you know, allows us to integrate not only the technological pedagogical content, but also, sorry, not only the technological content, but the pedagogical and the uh, knowledge, the knowledge that is necessary to create this type of, of task. So um, technology and language. Well, there are um, lots of references, studies, uh, research conducted on the benefits of that um, just suggest, conclude, um, just, you know, um, show the benefits, uh, technology, uh, and this, this combination of technology or this integration of technology for uh, enhancing uh, language learning um, pedagogical proposals um, have. So um, here are some, some um, aspects like, for example, uh, active engagement of students, uh, motivation. We could consider the authenticity, the authentic materials. We can also uh, promote learner autonomy or we can just respond to the diverse learning styles and cognitive styles that are in the uh, that are present in our classroom. So um, there's the potential that we have in technology in order to design and uh, revisit our language learning teaching is um, dramatic as you can see here. So there are a lot of uh, resources we can use in order to promote, uh, to enhance, to, to redesign, and to enrich our materials. Just um, we're going to share today with you two different um, products that are different outcomes from the from two different European projects we are involved in. Dial for You. This is an interactive uh, book creator in which um, there are a list of resources. And uh, you can just um, go into the specific resource and you have the definition, suggested use, and different tutorials. So it's free, it's open, and available in, on, on the web. And uh, the other one, it's our YouTube channel, in which you have also lots of resources, video resources in this case, in which you have the video, you have videos with the explanation of the tool and the um, potential uh, application of the tool for language learning and also tutorials and all the information in this case 
end a video file. So that's all.